Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Amber Rose, also known as The Religious Hippie. You can basically follow me on any social media platform or you can go straight to my website at thereligioushippie.com. On my website, you will find economy rosaries, haters will be prayed for prayer journals, St. Jude prayer mugs. My ministry is donation-based, so all of those items are for donation. Shipping is included. Every little bit truly helps me keep this ministry running. And if you cannot donate financially, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting because it really helps us with the algorithm. Thanks guys. So today's video is all about how I found my identity. I am still every single day working out my identity and, you know, gaining that confidence, but it was a lot worse when I was out of the faith and I am a people pleaser, which didn't help at all. I think a lot of us can subscribe to the people pleaser title these days. You don't want to upset anyone and you'll change your viewpoints, your morals, and even your entire personality just to fit in and make friends. My identity issues started in high school. They started when I I was around 13 they they sort of started when I was like 11 but they more or less picked up a lot more when I was 13 and I started getting groups of friends and clicks and things like that I had three specific friend groups I had the music and orchestra friend group I had my theater group which was a bunch of public high schoolers and middle schoolers sometimes I mean you know going into high school and then I had the homeschool group which was mainly Catholic teenagers. There were a few different homeschool groups that I was a part of, um, but I'm just gonna kind of wrap them all up into one because uh, it doesn't really matter. Now, I never really had a strong sense of who I was. And as a young, impressionable preteen who is no longer in her faith, if you guys want to know more about that story, I'll post that down below. I kind of just became the people I surrounded myself with, which honestly, you know, it's like the term you are what you eat. Well, you are who you surround yourself with. For example, if I was hanging out with my orchestra and music friends, I pretended to love classical and pop music and now I do really like classical and pop music but back then I definitely didn't. I acted like I knew more about music than I actually did and I just really wanted to fit in. I became this very preppy attention seeking uh what, what are they called? Pick me girls. I became one of those. When I was with my homeschool friends, I was into card games and sports and Catholicism, but not real Catholicism. Like people would pray, but none of the kids really took it seriously. And I never took it seriously because of that. It's like the parents would take it too seriously and then the kids would be like, whatever. And I was one of those kids, of course. A lot of them were also into the occult and many of them are no longer practicing Catholics. Many of them are now self-proclaimed witches or into occult practice which is very sad but this is one of the ways I was introduced to the occult back in the day and it's just kind of sad to see where that's led some people that I've known and when I was in theater my theater friends were pretty intense I became more quirky when I was with my theater friends and by quirky I mean like pretending I had mental health issues because that's what was seen as being quirky I I do not condone that at all and it's completely unhealthy but at that time when you're that young I mean, self-harm and being quirky and having an eating disorder were things that made you cool. Looking back on that, obviously it's ridiculous, but when you're in that mindset and everyone's like in that mindset, it's really hard to get out of it. I also began seeing same-sex attraction as more normal um, because I was around my theater friends so often and they were constantly talking about it or many of them were gay or lesbian. Um, and it was difficult because even though I knew it was wrong internally, because I was surrounded by it, I just kind of went along with it. Things like this continued happening to me throughout my teen years. I would get a new friend group and then I would change my personality to fit in with that new friend group, even if it meant risking my morals. At one point, I had a group of atheistic, like hardcore death metal friends and I became like goth. It was like my goth phase. I have no real photos of it, but I would wear like really dark makeup and I would listen to really hard rock music. And I kind of ended up weaning myself off of that with bands like My Chemical Romance and Pierce the Veil. I do not suggest you guys listen to those bands, but that's how I kind of weaned myself off of that. Um, it was a very dark time for me and I just wanted to fit in. I had a crush on one of the guys. And so for me, I thought that in order for him to like me, I had to become more like him. But in reality, he told me later that he liked me because of my bubbly personality and that I wasn't dark and dreary like everyone else in his life. And so when I became dark and dreary like him and his friends and everyone in his life, he kind of lost interest, which I'm, I'm gonna say I dodged a bullet. But I'm just saying, it's not a bad thing to be different. But this would continue for years. I was trying to be what other people wanted me to be without actually knowing who I was. The only time I truly felt like I was doing something for myself was when I joined a venture crew and 
I got scuba certified. I repelled off 50 foot towers. We went shooting almost every single weekend and we went camping. I did wilderness survival training. I truly felt like myself when I was in nature. But finally, all of this kind of came to a screeching halt when I turned 19 and reverted back to Catholicism. Once I had my reversion, I realized that I couldn't be iffy. I couldn't just pretend to be Catholic. I had to be all in or not in at all. I decided to say yes to Christ and become who he wanted me to be. This was a lot easier said than done, and it still is. It's not meant to be easy, and I don't want anyone to think it will be easy but he does help you carry your cross. So to start on this new journey, I really had to take a deep dive in myself. I had to look in the mirror and see who am I? Who does God see me as? And what is my identity? Now this was horrifying because I had to go through like my entire life, all the traumas, all the crazy things that I've done, who, what people have done to me, what I've done to them. It was really hard looking back because I had to see all of my flaws and my brokenness. And that's not something anyone really wants to see or look at, but it's very important for growth. And once I started doing that, I started growing out of my people pleaser phase. I started spending a lot of time in prayer and I would ask God to make me the woman he wanted me to be, not what someone else wanted me to be. I realized that it didn't matter what other people thought of me or what other people viewed me as or who they wanted me to be. All that matters is what God thinks. But because of my past, I wasn't completely sure how to become that woman that God wanted me to be. I didn't have any mentors or great examples. And so I was really confused how I was supposed to go about this without having a mentor. But the first step is asking God for his grace and asking God for the perseverance to continue being the person who he wants you to be. And confession. Confession is huge. I will talk about it until I die because confession is so important. And then the next step came when I started eradicating sin from my life. This is something we all need to do. We all need to purge sin from our lives. But this started when I purged immodest clothing from my closet. I purged immodest and scandalous books from my bookshelf. And I stopped watching TV shows and movies that were satanic or scandalous or sexual. I began learning more about my faith. And as I did learn more about my faith, I started gaining confidence and I started gaining a backbone. Now this change did not happen overnight. I don't want you guys to think that this is an overnight change. This is an ongoing process and it's been going on for three years now and it will continue going on for many years to come, I know for a fact, probably until I die. It really took a few months, if not a few years, for me to purge almost everything out of my life because I would have these weak moments and I would go to Target or I'd see something on Amazon and I'd be like, oh my gosh, that's so cute, and then I'd buy it. And then it's really immodest and I'd never actually wear it anywhere. And you know, things like that happen, but the main thing is, is that I held to my standards and even though I bought it, I would either return it or I wouldn't wear it. But purging sin out of your life will have consequences as well. Obviously, they're going to feel like consequences to us, but really they're blessings in hindsight. For example, I was no longer okay with just going with the flow with my friends. If they said something that was blasphemous or something that was extremely distasteful, like they would joke about abortion or they joke about things of that nature, I would actually say something and they weren't used to me standing up and speaking out. They were used to me just agreeing with whatever they wanted to say. And while I never shoved my religion down anyone's throat, I definitely stood up for what I believed in because everyone else does that. Catholics should be doing that as well. But um, because of that, I lost a lot of friends because even though I could respect them and see the person behind the hurt and all of this negativity, they could not do the same for me. And so they would cut me off. And some of them have come back later and they've told me like, hey, I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. And of course I forgive them and I, I love them dearly, but there's no real friendship that can be cultivated there because the views are so different, but I always leave that door open and let them know that they're always welcome. Now, I didn't completely understand all the suffering I was going through. Obviously in high school, I was bullied a ton. There was a lot going on. I was cyber bullied. I would receive threats all the time. It was not fun and I didn't really understand all the suffering that I was going through, but obviously looking back now, I can see that suffering is necessary for salvation and there's a purpose to suffering. I also had some setbacks, which I didn't completely expect to have. One of those being, I was a little intimidated. I would read these stories of the saints and I would see them and I'd be like, how can I be like that? Yes, they were sinners. They're saints now. They're sinless. They're in heaven. They're enjoying the beatific vision. And 
I'm still stuck on earth. How can I ever reach that level of holiness? Instead of viewing them as inspiration, I started viewing it as an unachievable goal, which obviously is not true and it's not good to think that way, but that's how I viewed it. And again, I want to remind you guys that this is not something that just happens overnight. This is a long process and it took me a while to really connect with certain saints. And the first saint that I really connected with ever since I was a little girl, well actually two, was Saint Joseph and then of course Saint Francis. Eventually, once I had those stepping stones, I was able to see the beauty in the other saints, and I could see how I could use their example while on earth still. I really believe that it was Satan who was kind of tricking me into thinking that the goal of sainthood is unachievable because he doesn't want us to have that relationship with God, and he'll try and throw us into despair so that we won't continue cultivating our relationship with God or our heavenly family. And I talked about this in one of my previous videos, I think two, two videos ago, where we need to do mental prayer at least 15 minutes a day. Please watch Gabby after hours his video on the urgency of mental prayer so so important i'll link it below for you guys but that is how we become saints through mental prayer but i realized i really needed to work on my relationship with god and i really needed to understand god to understand myself the more that i spent time in adoration and prayer the more time that i spent reading my bible and reading works of the saints the more i started understanding god and through understanding god i started understanding myself and where my identity lies i am a child of god and the more that you start doing this, the more you'll see areas of your life that are not centered around God and you'll be able to change that. For example, a few weeks after reverting back to Catholicism, I was still into some things that was against Catholic teaching, such as yoga, non-Christian meditation, and I was still watching some pretty inappropriate TV shows and movies. I was holding on to these things out of habit and curiosity, but I didn't realize how badly they were impacting my spiritual life until I cut them out. So then I really started focusing on Catholic meditation, mental prayer, start doing mental prayer, Pilates and good wholesome Catholic TV shows and movies. They don't have to be Catholic, but at least they're wholesome. It's a long journey to heaven. And you know what? The more we learn, the more we grow in faith, the more we grow in relationship with God, the more we understand our identity as a child of God. In the description, you'll find an examination of identity. I highly suggest you guys take this and start reflecting on your own identity. It asks you questions. I highly suggest you look it over and sincerely ask yourself these questions. Write them down, speak them out loud, bring them to prayer. Do what you need to do, but be honest with yourself and ask God for guidance. Do what you need to do, but be honest with yourself and ask God to make you who he wants you to be and ask the Holy Spirit for guidance and clarification. With all of that being said, I hope that this video helped you guys. I know that it's a healing process and it takes time. I'm praying for you. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye guys.